Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. So today we will be looking at the gross anatomy of the ovary. We'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the ovary. So what is the ovary? The ovary is defined as an almond-shaped and sized female gonad that helps in the production of the female gametes or oocytes and it is situated in the pelvic cavity. When I say almond shape and size, we mean that the ovary has the shape of an almond and also the size of an almond. And there are two ovaries in the female, the right and the left ovary, and the both of them are housed in the pelvic cavity here. They are housed in the pelvic cavity. So the right and the left ovary is specifically found in the right and the left inguinal region in the female, that is in the lesser pelvis. So we've been able to see what the ovary is and also the situation of the ovary. Then let's look at the functions of the ovary. When I did my introduction, I told us that the ovary helps in the production of the female gametes. Apart from helping in the production of female gametes, the ovary also help in the production of hormones, that is reproductive hormones in the female, estrogen and progesterone. So these two things are the main functions of the ovary. Then coming to the peritoneal fold, having known that the ovary lie in the pelvic cavity, the ovary is freely hanging. However, it is not just hanging on its own. A peritoneal fold helps to suspend the ovary in the pelvic cavity. So the peritoneal fold that helps to suspend the ovary in the pelvic cavity is known as the mesovarium. As a matter of fact, this mesovarium is one of the divisions of the broad ligaments of the uterus. The broad ligament of the uterus is divided into three. The mesothelium that is related to the uterus. We have the mesosalpins that is related to the uh, uterine tube. Now, the part of the broad ligament of the uterus that is directly or that helps to suspend the ovary in the pelvic cavity or the peritoneal cavity rather is known as the mesovarium. So this mesovarium helps to suspend the ovary in the pelvic cavity or the peritoneal cavity. Then having seen this peritoneal fold, let's look at the prepubital and the postpubital ovary. So, in the ovary of the female that are under the age of puberty, that is, female that younger girls that are under the age of puberty, the epithelial covering or the surface of the uh, ovary contains mesothelium or germinal epithelium. And this germinal epithelium helps to give the ovary its dull appearance at that stage and it is kind of a smooth, dull and smooth. But coming in uh, to the ovary of female that are in their reproductive age, the ovary is kind of scary. Eh? It contains a lot of scars and uh, it is distorted. This is because of the progressive rupture of the ovarian follicle and also the ovary during ovulation. So this is to say that because of the monthly rupture or the monthly rupture of the ovary during ovulation the ovary can of have a scary or distorted uh, appearance so that is it so these are the two differences between the ovary of a young girl and the ovary of a girl that is in a reproductive age then having seen this let's look at the ligaments of the ovary you know that ligaments helps to keep something in its position so the ligaments of the ovary help to hold the ovary in its position, that is to keep it in place. Then we have two ligaments in the ovary. This is the position of the ovary in the female. And the first ligament we have here is the one on the lateral side. This ligament of the, on the lateral side, you can see here, helps to attach the ovary to the uh, peritoneal wall. And the name of this ligament is known as the suspensory ligament of the ovary. So the suspensory ligament of the ovary, this is it.
it helps to or it allows the passage of blood vessels and nerves even lymphatic eh, to the pelvic brain so this is it the one on the lateral side is the suspensory ligament of the ovary which attaches the ovary to the peritoneal wall then we have the one on the media side you can see this one on the media side this is known as the ligament of the ovary it helps to attach the ovary to the lateral wall of the uterus as you can see here so these are the two ligaments of the ovary and this ligament like i told us from the onset it helps to keep the ovary in this position to keep it intact then having said that let's look at the pole of the ovary looking at this ovary here you notice that it has a superior pole and it has an inferior pole so this superior pole is the one that is related to the fimbricated part of the uterine tube as you can see here and the inferior pole as you can see here also so this is the superior pole and this is the inferior pole of the ovary then having seen that let's look at the arteria supply to the ovary the arterial supply to the ovary is through the ovarian arteries through the ovarian arteries and also the ovarian branch of the uterine artery then the venous drainage is also through the ovarian vein and also the ovarian branch of the uterine vein now this ovarian vein in particular is formed by the pampiniforous plexus so this is to say that the direct a venous drainage to the ovary is through the pampiniforous plexus but this pampiniforous plexus join together to form the ovarian vein so that is to say that the ovarian vein drains the ovary then coming to the nerve supply the ovary is supplied by the ovarian plexus and also the uterine plexus then the clinicals we have the polycystic ovarian syndrome the polycystic ovarian syndrome is kind of an imbalance in the androgen or the hormones it is an imbalance in the androgen or the hormones and this imbalance causes the causes kind of a cyst on the surface of the ovary and this in turn causes infertility and also the eggs the monthly eggs that are being released from the female not to be released that is it slow down ovulation or it stop ovulation instantly and this results in infertility then we also have ovarian cysts ovarian cyst in the actual sense means it's kind of a a solid or fluid like sac on the surface or within the ovary and this also causes pain pelvic pain abdominal pain and also inability to empty the bowel in the female so this is it for the clinicals in the ovary so we've come to the end of this teaching i will encourage us to subscribe to my youtube channel learn with chisum dates like this video share this video to your friends thank you very much